The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Everyone, Basil Chapman on this Valentine's Day, Monday, the 14th of Feb. Happy Valentine's, everyone. Dow's down 289, 293, 302. Uh, we're looking at a sudden sell off as um, you had the futures overnight just tanking. And then there was this momentary spike to the upside as um, it seemed like uh, Putin was talking about considering some kind of negotiations. Yeah, sure. And then you got the real thing coming out. Evidently, uh, I see here in the den, someone said, uh, was it in the den? Uh, where did I see that? Uh, Zelensky, what did he want to do? Oh, gosh, where was it? Uh, he wanted, uh, oh, he wanted, oh, that's right. Uh, thanks, Pat. Ukraine's president reaffirms desire to join NATO. Whoosh! So much for that. Uh, here comes the tension again. So basically what we're looking at is the larger tide going down continues. And my thinking has been that we're going to make a sideways move. How deep today's action is going to, how we close, it's going to be important. But the lowercase h, I'll just draw this in for you quickly because it applies to almost all the indices we're looking at. Did I lose something? Oh, no. Yes, no, I've got, there it is. Okay. So this h pattern, come down sharply, almost like a straight line and then rally up and then fail, usually at a peak A or B. When it's at, a, at a, an A or B, there's a good chance you're going to take out that left side low and go low. If it goes to a C, you've usurped some of the downside energy, but at the same time, you've used up a lot of the upside energy, and you can come back and hold somewhere above the left side low. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Let me just draw this out. Days young, anything can happen. But what I had done was, about two, three weeks ago, when I, I was discussing this, I said the pattern that I'm looking for after the volatility index had that huge spike to the upside was the, the emotionality of the sell-off was really something that uh, allowed the market to just have a, a big relief rally. But there are a lot of things that we look at. We look at the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. We look at the arch formation. How high can it go? The leg that starts from the bottom has to go in, probably in leg C to be a very bullish mode, way above the left side high for the S&P that would be at 4818.62. We're at 43.98. It's just so far-fetched to think we can even get there without a consolidation with a, a pretty decent major low. So we've had an internal low, we're waiting for the residual low, and my suspicion is that we're in a trading band, sideways band, the lower we go on each pullback in this arch, going to a second arch formation, so the lowercase h turns into a lowercase m, that's still going to be, a, I don't know what's going to happen to be able to get it above this downtrend line into the 4585, 4590 area, doesn't matter, that, that's what we've got as a pattern. Meantime, that's what we're looking at. So the S&P is down 19 and 43.98. Uh, this is underneath the 200 period moving average. So what happens for the for the next hour and a half is going to be uh, very, very important. Now we're looking at the QQQ. QQQ, arch formation. It's actually a little bit better shape. But wow, when you've come from the high of 408.71 on the 22nd of November, this is coming into almost December, uh, November, goes to December, January. We're almost three months into this consolidation, big consolidation. You've got to say that that is a huge decline. And there is a sell mode in the daily, sell mode in the channel wave notation in the weekly chart. And we're just watching this pattern because that long-legged doji in the monthly chart of the um, QQQs 
huh, we're even on the 14 period moving average. If we were to do that in the Dow, go to the, and that was a question that came up about the 14 period moving average in the monthly chart, which is at 33,675. If we were to take that out on a closing basis, a monthly closing basis, I would have to say that that is really quite serious. The first time we've had that kind of signal in a monthly chart, take it seriously. Now, in the monthly chart, you've got the S&P, which almost, I don't see any way that we can not co consider this is going to be a peak B. In the Chapman Ray methodology, we're always looking, once you get a buy signal, which this to uh, upgrade it to a buy mode, that's what we've got in the S&P monthly. You always expect at least a C and then a D, and then you've got to be careful. So this is going to be an important month. And not only that, you've got a Roman candle, Chapman Wave Roman candle right there. I forgot to type that in. With a low of 4222.62, a close below that any time in the next three or four weeks would be pretty serious. Um, and that means we've got a sell mode in the daily, sell mode in the weekly, no signal yet in the month, monthly. But wow, we are watching that very closely. <laughs> so this is very important. Let's go to the IWM. IWM has had a pretty decent uh, sell-off from the 240, was it 48 or 44? 244.46 high of the 8th of November. We're trading now at 202. That, that's, you know, sell mode daily, sell mode weekly. And I've actually, I have to wait for the end of February. But I wouldn't be surprised if I have to call this at least a sell signal in the iShares. But at the same time, they are desperately trying to move in their own trajectory. Look, they're up $1.51 at 202.90, up 0.75. I like that. But it doesn't mean to say we like it enough to buy it. But I think this is something we're going to keep our eye on to see if in this rotation, the small caps, the Russell 2000, uh, this is the, these are the small caps. And maybe they're trying to find a little home on the buy side. All right, that's enough with that. Let's go to the SMHs. The SMHs up uh, four, almost four points at 268. Horrible action from the all-time high. 318s down to 249, bounces back to 290, now 268. I just think there's a story to be told, and we've got a couple of semiconductors coming out with earnings this week. I, I just, I don't care how good the earnings are, I think there's a problem with the semiconductors. So we've, we're watching this very closely to see what happens at the end of February. Does the, do those semiconductor, uh, the, you know, applied materials, this is, NVIDIA, they're fantastic companies. I think they've had their time in the sun, and now they need a little bit of shade. They need to digest those huge gains, and they're going to take some time. All right, we'll see what happens. And now we're going to go to um, TLT is really important. The TLT is down again, down $1.50 at, th at um, 136.75. We had a chap wait green Roman candle, very simple at the bottom when it happens. If there is a close within two days above the previous high, that is on the very short term, you've turned the candle of the open and close. Uh, and this is in this case, we're going to go to the close of 138.25. Huh? 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 Wait, no, I'm not interested in the close. I'm talking about the open of 136.87. So the 136 is has to become support if there is in the next week, but I'd, I'd say just a week. If there's a close above the high on Friday in the TLT above 138.53. Dow's down 250 with right back. That's a chapter. I get some questions. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. 
educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free! Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Yes, we're back, and I'm just trying to check something out. Give me one second. Oh, I want to get... Uh, yeah, so what we're looking at here, and this is going to be very important. Uh, so I didn't quite finish the, the uh, question I had. Well, two questions came up. One was I didn't have any trend gauge reading. I usually consider that a kind of a negative in an environment like this. <coughs> you would have expected the trend to shoot much higher. Um, and then when there was a turnaround uh, with the with the futures spiking up like that, you would have th thought that the, the trend would have a, a low reading. So it's just kind of meandering. So let me just go back. The 14-period moving average of 33,661 isn't the low. The low was uh, 35,131. 30, 30, 30, wait, wait, what's going on here? 35, 131. Oh, oh, that's the one over there. Yeah, 35,000, uh, 33,150. Okay, so in that whole 33,000 area, that's going to be key because if there is a close under the wick of this month, that doesn't tell you that's a low. All it says is that within the context of a monthly chart going from 18,213, doubling to 36,952 in two years from the March 2020 low, um, you can expect a decent pullback. I would use other uh, methodologies to tell you what the key key support level would be, but I have to base it on how, on a monthly basis, the MACD, if it expands, uh, let me do, yeah, you see this daily chart right here of the Dow? See how the MACD started off flat and then it expanded huge as it made the dreaded H pattern, that first one, and then failed around about the 18th or so of January, and it tumbled down. Um, <coughs> and then what happens is the MACD expands, expands, and then the histogram, the little vertical bars, the distance between these two moving averages, 
starts to shrink and then it goes positive. At this particular point, it has been positive. Today it's unchanged. I'm sorry, no, today it's down. Negative, so it's crossed negative. Day is young, we'll see what happens. But that is one sign. The other sign is that on Friday, with that move down, the, the nine period went under the 14 period moving average in the daily, back again to negative. The weekly chart is B negative. And look at the distance from the nine period to the 14 period in the monthly chart. So I don't want to get carried away by giving numbers out either on the upside or the downside in the monthly chart until I have a clue. I haven't even finished the month of February yet. But the level to watch absolutely is 33,600 to 33,100. A close below that in February is suggesting strongly that my uh, let me see if I can do that. Let me just do that one more time. SBX.X. There we go. And that this arch pattern, which should have some kind of a rebound coming coming down so sharply, says it's going to have to be a lot of things. and have to be uh, the whole shipping aspect has to be looking like it's going to be resolved. We don't know yet. The whole um, uh, aspect of rates has to be somewhat we, we're clueless as to what's happening there. Um, well, we're not clueless. We know that rates are going higher, but how, when, and how, what? Those are the things we don't know. And the other aspect is this is sitting there. The whole Russia thing is kind of just sitting there. Now, it could be that within uh, some people said Wednesday. I don't know why they said Wednesday. Nobody really knows. I, you know, so this is one of those situations, you know, the nudge factor that I talk about in the market, when the market is like on options Friday, most players don't know where it's going to go. But they are good enough that if they get a sense, just a whiff of certain things happening intra, intra day or intra hour or intra 10 minutes, they immediately jump on the bandwagon and say, that's the way it's going. So they're not even sure they're going to be ready or they're going to use their, their knowledge. But when it comes, it comes. And that's the same thing as I think with Putin. He's done everything he wants. And now it's just a matter of time. He could just delay this for six months. Who knows? But that's what I'm saying. It's the nudge factor. We don't have the nudge factor yet in the... Um, yeah, in terms of the military aspect. All right, let's get let's get back to the nitty gritties. So I wanted to show you this. The uh, gold, this is a really good move. The fact that the move in gold held, it's, I, I was really suspicious because when the news came out that maybe he's uh, some discussions or whatever, if you can believe anything that Putin says, um, gold didn't really do anything. It held still plus uh, 18 or 16. Now, now it's up 25 and a new recovery high. This is a very good aspect. And finally, we're starting to see. Look how horrible the GDX. I had a bunch of questions. I said I'll deal with it right now. Uh, GDX was acting, look, Friday, early in the morning, in the th under 31, it was looking like, oh, geez, another, uh, another sideways move. All of a sudden, the rectangle that I drew has gone back towards this last peak C, which was a C minus because it failed to went to 28.87 in the market vectors, gold miners ETF. And then, woof, we go to the upside. And um, high today is 33.02. The high on the 20th of January was 32.33. Uh, wait a minute. How can that be? 33.10, sorry. I mean, get that right, 33.19. So we're on our way there. But if you look at the weekly chart, it just says, hey, we've seen this before, nothing to see here. Look at the monthly chart. So I I always contend that I, the, the consideration that gold is has a function in the marketplace, but it has a function in the geopolitical arena, which is far more, uh, how can I say, far more individualized? Because look, silver is having a nice move, but it's stuck at the 200 period moving average. It isn't up near the peak C that it was at uh, near the 24, what, 60, 70 area. It's at 2386. So it's very specific. If you look at the dollar, the dollar's actually had a pretty decent move. Peak A, peak B. Does this still mean that out of all the... Uh, all the economies in the world, the uh, American economy is still considered to be one of the best. 
I, that's the way I look at the dollar. I look at it as, as an icon, a Harley Davidson icon of American uh, economic activity as measured throughout the world. <laughs> Let's just look at Hog. Hog had a big spike up. It's holding pretty well, Harley Davidson. And what I'd said a long time ago, we have no position in Harley Davidson. So a long time subscribers know we used to follow this really closely. Once we had a really nice move, and then we haven't been back again for a long time. Um, but I'd said if Harley Davidson can go electric, in keeping with the, I don't know if I want to use the word fashion because that kind of means it's just transitory but in keeping with the direction of the automobile companies and everything else going electric and it will find favor it's going to be something to keep an eye on for 2022 2023 i'll be back in a moment dow's down 274 he's down just 17 we'll be back and there are a bunch of things we're going to think about and we'll see you. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. I saw this in the can a question about, and I'd never, I'd never, I didn't even know it existed. B N D D. Oh, this is the Tiger, Tiger, Tiger um, future. So we're looking at B N D D is. The quadratic deflation ETF, and it is the K, what, KFA funds, New York sticker, the New York uh, Stock Exchange ticker, uh, BNDD. And what it is, the BNDD 
ETF is an ESG fixed income ETF that seeks to benefit from lower growth, deflation, lower or negative long-term interest rates, and or a reduction. So it's, yeah, 25.59, uh, down 8 cents. It's kind of getting a little bit of a base built into it. I just think that, um, yeah, I think that this is something we've got to keep an eye on. I, 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 at this point, it's doing nothing. It's just stuck in the lower range, and it was an IPO back in um, September or so. Uh, it's been down to 23.50. It's been up to 27.50. I, let's just keep an eye on it. I, th I, this is in this pattern. All I can say is a rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience. It did not retest the low of the 25.06 uh, level on the 10th of January. This is just something to keep your eye on. Normally, I would draw an H pattern like this, and I'd like to see where it comes down to. This is a very quick one, so I kind of have to stretch it out and then say, hey, so far it's making higher lows. Not higher highs, but higher lows. So I would draw another one in right here. All right, let's keep an eye on it. I'm going to write it down here, BNDD. I just hope uh, deflation is not in the cards at all. Because deflation is probably one of the worst things that you can have. Can't raise prices. You can, it's just oh, it's just terrible. Profits are not made. Ugh. All right. So that's B and D D. Um, a question about the VIX index. Uh, oh, as a trade? No, I, I don't see it. This is you got better trading vehicles for for trading. Yeah, just on an intraday basis. Nah, that's not not worth it. The VIX index had a big spike to 32.04 this morning. 38.94 was the COVID inflation of Russia. First time I've had Russia on here for a long time. Well, I did with the impeachment thing, but I didn't treat it as Russia because I, I thought that that was not proved, proven at all. Uh, but in the meantime, back at the ranch, um, 35, 32 was the high of um, around about December was at the first, and then 27.39 was the high on the 20th of uh, December. Yeah, oh, sorry, that has to be January. No, that was December. Oh, that was November. Sorry. That was the high. Yep, the 2nd of December, 3rd of December. You remember that high made its high after the Dow made its low. And then the next one was the 20th of December, 27.39. So this is really interesting because you've got a cup formation that failed. You had your Friday a look, here's the weekly chart. Here's your Friday close, a green, a green. And that usually says perhaps the next week you could have another green. Remember, I was discussing this last week. Well, we are a green right now. The Dow is down 353. The S&P is down 29. This is, it started off to be a horrible day. And then the market opened with that news. And there was a, some kind of a, an effort to, to rally back again. Certainly came back huge from the lows. And now we're back down again, just trying to form some kind of a, a, a base. But if you look at the big picture, the volatility holding in the 28 or higher area is just suggesting to us that fund managers are buying insurance. And as long as they're buying insurance, it says you've got to anticipate that there are triple digit down days in, in play and that rallies are going to be shorter term as long as the VIX index remains high. Just keep it as simple as possible. The other thing to keep as simple as possible is that within the context of, I have to go to, in the context of the economy seeing a rebound because of, um, because COVID is going to go into the background, uh, we're going to see some kind of economic recover, recovery as seen by stocks like a Marriott, which is down from the high of Friday, but uh, it's up $1.91 and $171.84. Holding really well. And that's the kind of thing that we're trying to do here for the opening call. We're trying our best to at least be in, give, give, a, give a chance to some, there we go, normalization coming back socially. And that says that Hyatt, Whoops, don't type it there, type it here. Hyatt, these are stocks that are holding well. H, there it is. Um, that is Hyatt Corporation. 
Uh, it's up today, dollar forty-three. It also made a peak D on Friday, so we're going to be watching this very closely. There's your D. Uh, let's go to Hilton. So as long as these are showing some kind of some kind of sense of normalcy. Uh, it's up today, but it isn't acting as well as the others. It's still not that far from its high, but uh, it's, it's pulling back some. But uh, this is what I'm saying. So let's go to Jets, because why on earth would Jets show any strength like it did over the last five six sessions? Today's up 11 cents at 22.28, having tried for the 22.80 level and then pushed through the high that was made on Thursday, I think it was, around about 23.50. Why is this holding not bad? When it's the airlines, and the airlines with the winter, they've had to shut down so many times, and yet they're holding pretty well as a group. So I, it's really tough on my my video on Sunday, yesterday, for subscribers, um, my overview, I said there are so many conflicting things. If you're looking here at the den, it was mentioned, Sintas, one of the stocks I've followed for decades, um, overalls, uniforms, rentals, it's making this dreaded H pattern at a low. It hit a high in the 460 area. What was that? 461.44 on the 13th of December. Here it is at 373, about to take out the left side low in an art formation. Wait a minute. That's that's really bad action. That's overall uniforms, rentals. Uh, if you look at R, um, RHI, this is Robert Haft. Up near the highs, this is Robert Half. These are jobs. These are interviews and jobs. Uh, D, let me call this D. I believe that that's a C. Um, uh, that's an E. Yep, that's it. Now let me just double check. I don't want to just do it. So Robert Half is doing really nicely. RHI up 25 cents at 121.17. Uh, 11559. One, well, one, one, one. 1956, 1958. So here's your peak E, potential peak E, could even be an instant restart uh, right here at the high, an all time high. What's with this, Robert Hap? Because jobs, they, we are short on jobs in certain areas, very short. So that's why you've got this dichotomy. You've got this. I mean, if ever we've looked at a diverse market, you, you're looking at. You're looking at the the core, the SMHs pulling back very sharply, saying that they should be on anticipating a, a turnaround in the overall economy and they should be going to highs. And here they are way off the off the, the all time highs, holding okay, but really not looking great at all. To me, that's a sign of what's going on. Look at look at Ford, almost about to uh, down again. So I think that we've got to be careful here, and I'll be back in a moment to talk about that. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So, yeah, so this is the one side of the whole thing. It says to me, that we have a much needed consolidation that's going on. But at the same time, there is a demand and the fact that all, just a tremendous number of people have saved money by not paying for the commuting, not paying money for uh, you know, babysitting, a whole bunch of aspects, or maybe maybe they are, and I'm not sure about that. But there are that the, the savings rate is really expanded it's it, it's really very positive although i was very disappointed to see that the credit card usage is it just skyrocketed I, i'm not sure if that's um to do with funds that were just there available to be to be used or whether it was uh, to to save the day and pay for things i mean this is a real tough thing but if I'm looking at the overall economy, the fact that steel held well, it's pulling back today, down 66 in the SLX Van Eck uh, Vector Steel ETF at 56.98, that is saying to me that in the shorter term, there is a demand that's being met in the buying and selling in the whole in the infrastructure area, I, I shouldn't say infrastructure. In the the capital goods, this is this is this is important. I mean, to, the effort made in in something like a U.S. Steel or a new core. I don't know how they predict the outcomes of their putting together some kind of criteria that says we've got to meet these goals, we've got to meet those goals. How do they actually judge it in a time like this when you don't even know what the goals are? When you look at the automobile industry, of course, you look at Alcoa rather than the steel companies. But still, it's the same sort of thing. So this is saying to me, and this is the reason why I said, maybe when we're looking at this big picture, you've got to step back and say, wait a minute. There were areas like the IAI, oops, like the IAI, like the steels that are actually holding well. Well, the IAI... Down today, $1.52 at 108.14, is the ISIS broker dealer and security ETF still holding up towards the higher range? But that says to me that there's a really good chance that people are starting to do a lot more uh, investing on their own. But I, I, don't, I don't want to call it trading. I have no idea whether it's trading or investing, whatever it is. But that seems to me <clears throat> to be a good thing. But it also says it means that the volatility that you're seeing in a Schwab, look at that, 95.62, drops sharply down to the 84s, and then spikes back to what? 96.24 on the 9th of February. Just uh, less than a month later, it does a double top, 
and now it's pulling back. I don't like these double tops. It says, uh-oh, <clears throat> be careful, because if you don't hold key support, in this case, it'll be in the 84s, there's a big problem. We were long. We're not long anymore. Uh, I'm just, now I'm stepping aside and trying to be as careful as possible, just trying to find sectors that might, under certain circumstances, not be as vulnerable as, as many others in the, in the different sectors that we uh, cover, you know, you got the XLF. Look at this, the XLF down today sharply, down 55 cents, now 39.56. This is the S&P Select Financial Spider Fund. Now, here's something that I need to talk about. I, I've made a big deal about it often enough, but I need to repeat it again. Well, first of all, 41.70 was the high on the 13th of January in the S&P Select Financial Spider Fund. It drops to 36, five points, that's 11% or so, comes back to where? 41.39, within a, less than a dollar of the previous high announcement. How many of these double tops can we see? It just happens over and over again. So I am looking at this and I'm saying, now we've got to be very um, cognitive of the rotations and even the rotations within the rotations. And what we're looking at here is that normally, and this I've discussed for years and years, when markets become volatile, and I always use that in air quotes, volatile, and all it means in, in um, stock market parlance, they're going down. So when the key indices and stocks are starting to deteriorate and come down, almost always you'll find that money migrates from the volatility of stocks, meaning going down, to the so-called security. And I always say so-called, and you can see that now. That's the reason why I call it also in air quotes, so-called security and safety of bonds. It didn't happen this time. It's not happening now. Why? Because the TBT is telling us, the cards holding after that horrible doji Roman upside down Roman candle on Friday. It's holding really well. This is the ultra short Lehman 20th Treasury bond ETF. So when people say it's different this time, and then people roll, other people roll their eyes and say, oh, yeah, sure. We always say it is different this time. There is there is a big difference this time. And you can see it. And that just says to me, we have to be aware that the inflationary aspect is a little bit separate from bonds, usually you look at yields and say, oh, yields are going up, maybe we'll get some inflation. No, that's the, that's the reason why I'm saying this is a potpourri. This is, this is a mix of so many divergent aspects that is, it's not that easy to put them all together. And trying to put them all together means that you've got to be very selective. So that cancels out um, the XLF is going to skyrocket because bonds are going higher. Uh, these are maybe separate things. So we have to look at the, like, we're a long bank of America pulling back sharply today, down 74 cents. Long from the uh, 31s, it's gone all the way to 50.11, taking a little bit off. And here's your double top, 50.08 on the 10th of January to 50.11. These V-shaped double tops or cup formation double tops can be lethal. Oops, I've already drawn that. I have to draw this one here. Yeah, look at that, V-shaped pattern. And in fact, this one almost had a left side, right side price time match from the high of the 10th to the low of the uh, 24th and then up to the high of uh, this past Thursday. So I'm saying be very careful. The reason why we've tried to raise as much cash as we could is because you do need to have cash available there will be plenty, plenty of buys. So a question in the Dan, could I look at CF? Well, CF is a little different. CF is, uh, CF Industries Holdings, um, hydrogen, nitrogen products for clean energy, fertilizer, emissions abatement. Yeah, it made a leg D on Friday. And it went to um, 77 point, uh, I think 24-ish. And now what we're looking at 77, yep, 24. And now we're looking at it at 70.18. 77 down to 70 in two days, 10% correction. Peak D in the daily now, leg D in the weekly. We've just started the week. I can't talk about it as if it's a weekly peak D, but it's a leg D, maybe at a peak D. And a leg F, quick E to F in the monthly charts. I just got to watch this. And that's just, 
There are times when I look at the market and I say, oh my goodness, just you got to get out of everything. Uh, and then there are other times to say, no, wait a minute, try to be as rational as you can. It's very hard to be rational in this market. All you can do is follow the charts as best you can and play, the, play whatever it is on a short term, but the longer term says, got to wait for some decent bounce, a, a decent rate to pay before we can expect. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. And Dow's down 321. Just ugly. And SP's now down 23. I just wanted to mention that I will be the guest host uh, for the Tom O'Brien Show at 3 uh, p.m. today. Check out my opening call daily newsletter. And, of course, great program. Larry Pesavento will be coming up uh, next. And then you've got Think or Swim. With uh, Kevin Hinks, you've got uh, Steve Rhodes, uh, Dave White, and then I was sitting in for Tom O'Brien. Question about Devon Energy. It made I, I'm calling this for now a peak G at on the fourth of Feb at 55.44, pulling back a little bit. But if you put it together with crude oil, uh, they don't go 100% together, but they'll be moving the directional wise. Um, watch crude oil because if there is a sudden pullback and crude oil at 93.54 this week touches 89.30, that will say that's the first time that you've seen some sort of, because of the technicals, maybe pulling back, some sort of digestive phase. But as long as there's this configuration going on or potential and, uh, you know, 
and you know, in Ukraine, you just you, you got to be very careful. I wouldn't be shorting, and I would still keep a position there. You can take a little bit off. The other thing is natural gas. Natural gas made that peak D, huge peak D, in the daily chart and the Chapman Wave methodology. Slumps under the 200 period moving average is now up one up 19 cents at 4138. Yeah, this just says it's stuck in range. It has big moves up and down. If it starts to trade in the 433 area. Um, that's going to be a good sign. But so far, it's just stuck. And I will be back, as I say, at 3 o'clock. We can discuss a lot more things, see how the day progresses. I see bouts of buying coming in, but they can't hold. I see bouts of selling coming in. So far, uh, they've been met with buying. And that's, just, that's what I'm saying. We're in this mixed market. Even intraday, you can see it. But more and more areas are starting to deteriorate. with us watching the, the uh, steel sector very closely. Have a wonderful day. I'll be back for the news. And then comes Larry Pizzavento. Wonderful shows coming up. And don't forget, we start at 9 with Tommy O'Brien. Market kickoff. Fabulous show. I'll be back in a moment. And then I'll be back this afternoon. Soon.